Hello everyone! Today we're going to take a look at a plug and play. This is a 50 in 1 plug and play. It plugs directly into your TV as it so helpfully says right here on the sticker. And uh, the best part about it though is the name, uh, or the brand I should say, that it came from. This is from a company called Manly Toys. <laughs> I just love that name, Manly. It's, it's like, yeah, this plug and play, it turns your boy into a man. They're from China. This is just a typical plug and play. Uh, there are a few things that caught my eye though on this thing. The main one being this little warning right here. Let's see if we can focus in on it. Okay, it says this device complies with part 15 of the FCC rules. Operation is subject to the following two conditions. One, this device may not cause harmful interference and this device must accept any interference received including, including interference that may cause undesired operation. <laughs> I've never seen that warning on a plug-and-play. I don't think you need that warning to sell a plug-and-play, but for whatever reason they decided to include it here and uh, What interference would it be receiving? I mean, it really just has button input. It's not I guess maybe a signal from the TV, but Don't you usually put those warnings on like a, a Device that has Bluetooth or wireless. I, I don't know, but it, it just seems like they didn't need to have it on there But it got on there anyways uh, as far as the buttons go, you have A and B right here. Uh, reset this little button and then start and select. I kind of don't like it that start is so close to reset though, because maybe if a game needs that, then I'll accidentally press reset. Um, let's see, another thing is that the D-pad seems a little offset. I mean, do you guys see it? I'm going to put this flat on the table. And look, it's, it's like tilted to the left, which is what you don't want. I mean, the buttons right here, they're tilted to the left because... That's how human thumbs work. Look, you have your thumbs right here, but this one, why wouldn't they tilt the D-pad if they were going to tilt it? Why wouldn't they tilt it to the right? I, I think that was a mistake on their part because when you have your thumb on here, it feels strange. Like if you are if you try to press up, you're going to actually press diagonally. Uh, yeah, it, this doesn't work. And uh, the power button is right here. Um, there's not really a lot to say about this. I don't even remember where I got this thing. It was so long ago. It must have been years ago. Probably at, you know, some secondhand store. But, um, yeah, so it just has these little coax, uh, inputs. And, ah, this, I totally forgot to tell you guys about. It seems like they were supposed to have another button on here because, as you can see right here, there's a little cutout, which doesn't appear on this side. And, in fact, I mean, it has these little spaces right here. When you're holding it, it feels like you should have shoulder buttons right here. But, like I said, there's only this side that has something there. And it seems like they blocked it off. Maybe they decide, like, midway through that they wouldn't have a button right there. But that is strange. I've never seen it where they just kind of cut it out with a little bit of plastic. They just replaced it with that. Um, otherwise, uh, how many batteries does this thing need? I think it needs four AAAs. Yeah, I'm very sure of it. And, um, yeah, let's get right into it. All right, let's see what we got here. The first game is Super Fighter, which is obviously Super C, except the guys descend from a submarine into the jungle. You also get permanent power-ups. At the beginning, you select one and that becomes your default weapon. This makes some of the power-ups redundant because you can collect the same power-up for the same weapon that you already have and then it doesn't do anything, of course. While playing this game, I also realized that this plug-and-play has its buttons reversed. So A is B and B is A. And that does get a little irritating. Even at the game select menu, because the right button sends you backwards, and the left button goes forward through the game list. I never got used to that. Thankfully a lot of the games on here are just one button games, so it doesn't really get in the way of anything. The next game is Racing Car and AH! Holy shit! What the fuck was that? It's some creepy anime face that pops up when you start the game. And she says, please waiting. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys, this is a disc-based console, so uh, there's gonna be a little bit of loading on some of the games, okay? But the wait is worth it because Racing Car is a pretty good game. I don't know what the original game was, I'm sure it was something Japanese, but it is good. It's a little confusing at first because you start out with a drag race and then you're behind the car, but the car on the larger screen is not you, you're the one on the bottom left. It's only when you pass your rival, and there's a different view for that too. After you pass them, then you're at the top screen. This game has a lot of things happening at once, you also have to shift through gears, and you can even run out of gas. However, it's hard as hell. I haven't been able to get first place on a race yet, and I'm usually pretty good at racing games. If you know what this game originally was, then please tell me in the comments. Game number three is Space War, which is actually Gunnack. Gunnack is one of the best top-down shooters on the Famicom. 
We talked about it before and I own so many copies of this game because of these clone consoles, but I still kick my own ass for not buying this game when it was 5 bucks. Next is Street War, which is just Mighty Final Fight and the characters are drawn just a little differently. Then we have Air Tiger, which is 1942. I know this game is a classic, but I hate this port. I, I hate that ringing sound that it keeps making. It sounds like Morse code, it just drives me nuts. Then we have Monster, which it helpfully tells us is Sun Sun. You just jump on platforms to get items to get points. I don't get it. Then we have Inclement Trip. And despite the very curious name, it's actually Spy Hunter. But I don't think you play as a car, instead you play as like a guy who has a cape and he's flying around? I, I don't know, I can't make sense of it. Next we have Magic Block. Did you know that by law, Chinese plug and plays are not allowed to be sold unless they include a Connect 3 game? Yeah, look it up! Game number 9 is Pocky, and it is one of the most infuriating games here. It has the most lopsided jumping physics I've ever seen. It seems like you can't get enough momentum to jump on the space where you need to be, and you don't have a lot of control when you're in the air. You can shoot ahead of you, but that doesn't help out much. I don't see where the fun is in this game. Number 10 is 100 Yard Dash, and it's just NES track and field. Now number 11 has possibly the best title in the whole group here. It's called Panzer Fly Car. But sadly, the game is pretty disappointing. It's just a top-down racer, but at least this time they spelled fuel correctly. And it has a bad habit of being very unfair. Look at this! How are you supposed to get through? There's no way to get through that. You just have to crash and then hope that the game is more generous next time. It's a really awful game. The next game is Tennis, which you play with your oversized caterpillar referee, as one does in the game of Tennis. And then we have Winter Cup, which I believe takes place in an alternate timeline because the year is 2004, but the USSR is still alive. But it is a pretty good game. Next is Bumping R16, which I believe was originally Turbo 16. I've never played this before, but it actually has some really cool stuff going for it. It's like an overhead racing game, but it zooms into the different areas that you visit. That's really amazing for the technology that they're using. And the game is really fun, I totally recommend that you check it out. I mean, it's wholesome fun for the whole family. Oh, god damn it, guys! Uh, moving on to Javelin Throw, which is another track and field game. And I see what they're doing here, yeah, very clever. You're breaking up track and field so you could pad out the games list. Come on, guys, stop it already. The next game is Risker, which is Excite Bike but with a car. This game is amusing just to see how they made a car behave like a motorcycle rider. Game 17 is Van 1, and that's just Twin B with a reskin. The next game is Dragon, and it's about a snake that likes to eat blue balls. There's no joke there. He just likes to take care of blue balls. Then next we have Hot Speed, and it's a very basic driving game. A lot of these games are Famicom tiles with a sprite swap, but I can't really put my finger on this one. I don't think I've ever seen it before. So this might be a very recent homebrew from China. A chindi game, as I call it. Game 20 is x 2. It's a shooter game where you're behind your ship, and that makes it really hard to aim. There's also a ton of slowdown when there's a lot of enemies on screen. That's very unusual, you typically see Sprite Flicker instead. Next is Long Jump, and it's another Olympic game. 22 is Diamond, which is a breakout clone, and I gotta tell you, it's not bad. You don't even have to destroy all the blocks, you just have to get to the Diamond, which makes this type of game a lot less tedious. 23 is Skeet Shoot. Ugh, I hate that song, I'll never be able to watch Chariots of Fire again. 100 meter hurdles is exactly what you think it is. 25 is archery and ugh. Come on China, it was funny the first three times you did it, get over it. 26 is hassle and this is pretty cool, I think you play as Fantastic Mr. Fox. The game looks basic at first, you just have to get through the level, but it's actually pretty cool. Later in the game you get to drive a tank. I cannot figure out what this game is. This could be a chindi game and if so it's one of their best. The only thing I can think of is that it might be a heavily redone version of Commando. I don't know, if you guys know what it is, tell me in the comments. Next we have Land Angel, which is actually Challenger. And the game lives up to its original name because it is quite challenging. I've never been able to get past the train. I want to though because I hear that later on it turns into a top-down adventure game. Number 28 is Destroy One, which is Wrecking Crew. I didn't realize it until now, but Wrecking Crew is a pretty bad game. Next we have Good Hand, which is a modified city connection. Except in this version, you're on a motorcycle instead of a car, and they also include Boglins for some reason. However, they really messed up on this one, they pretty much made the game unplayable. Because in the original City Connection, the way that you get to the next level is by driving over all the surfaces. And the game loops infinitely, so it's very important to know where you've been before. But in this one, they took that out! 
I'm thinking that one of their early builds did still have that, but they thought it was a glitch so they took it out. And it makes the game almost impossible because if you have even one little square of pavement that you haven't run over, then you're never gonna find it and you're stuck. Also, I wonder if you caught this, but this game is the opposite of Risker. Risker is a motorcycle game that they turned into a car game, and City Connection is a car game that they turned into a motorcycle game. Game 30 is one that we're familiar with, this is Combata. And thanks to the viewers in the comments, I know that this game is Ninja-kun, and I now have the whole collection. They're really good games, especially the sequels. We should look at them another time. Next is Billiards, which is a pool game where the physics suck, now guys, number 32 made me freak out. The game Toto is Astro Robo Sasa. I've never seen that on a plug and play, this is special. Astro Robo Sasa is one of my favorite Famicom titles. And they redid the sprites here and there on this one. The weird thing is that in the original you play as this little spaceman, and in this one they replaced him with Mylon from Mylon Secret Castle. And let me tell you, if you had this game's abilities in Mylon Secret Castle, that would have been a much better game. Otherwise the game plays exactly the same. It's a great game, but it gets very challenging later on, especially in the water levels. Next is UFO Race. Next is EarthGuard. This is a weird game. It's a shoot 'em up but it's very repetitive. For a second, I thought I must have missed something. I thought the screen was infinitely looping like Defender. But you do actually make progress. It just takes a long time. You even get power-ups, and there's an end boss. It is interesting, and I want to play more, but the music will drive you fucking crazy, I swear. No joke, the first time I played this, my recorder didn't work, so I had to play it again to get footage, and it was just brutal. Number 35 is Golgotha, which we've seen before, we know it as Squidbilly Bomberman. 36 is Hoodle, the NES pinball game. 37 is Aether 2, which is Warp Man. I don't like this game, it's just way too boring, and I never know what I'm supposed to do here. Next is Sky Invader, which is Sky Destroyer, but with different sprites. I think they tried to go all futuristic, but the funny thing is that the plane still has a propeller. 39 is Penguin, which is the game Nuts and Milk. 40 is Rogue Brothers, but I can't really figure out what this game is. Help me out, guys. The only hint I have is that on the bonus level it says he's a fan of Mario. That's all I got. I mean, they don't even show his brother. Who are the Rogue Brothers? The next game is Smart Asel, which is a modified version of the game Arabian. The game is really boring, it's way too easy until you get to this area where you have to jump on platforms. The next game is Surface Fire, which is Millipede, and I really like that game, it's a very good addition here. 43 is TNT, which is another Bomberman clone. 44 is Aether Kavas, which you guys know I love. And again, thanks to you guys, I know that this game is Macross, and I own it now. Next we have Triple Jump, and it seems to be a- Ah, oh, you tricky motherfuckers! 46 is Brush Roll 2, which begins with another creepy face. It's a maze game where you have a paintbrush and you have to go over the entire area of the map and avoid enemies. Think of it as like a severely downgraded Splatoon. I wonder how come Brush Roll 1 isn't on here? Maybe it was as boring as watching paint dry. And the rest of the games we already covered on other devices. Conti Energy is Load Runner, except now it's insanely difficult because the buttons are swapped. Bandits is Donkey Kong 3, Bounce is Mappy, and Bitha is Puyan. To wrap this up, I gotta say, I'm very surprised. This is a pretty good plug and play. If you take out all the track and field games, then Bomberman is the only one that repeats. And that's pretty commendable, usually they repeat all the time. And the D-pad didn't get in the way like I expected it to. I can think of at least 7 games on here that play really well. So I can totally recommend this device. But of course I would, if you only knew of my plan. Because with just 7 games, I can make you a man! Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.